What if every culture group was a nation in 1444? Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're gonna be checking out what would happen if every culture group was a nation in 1444. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. Now, as you can see, it's December 1st, 1444, and I've made every culture group in Europe Africa and Asia be one nation. As you can see all the countries match the cultural groups that I have set so far and this honestly took a pretty long time to set up around two and a half to three hours. So I hope you guys like this video. So let's start with the overview. Over here in Europe of course we have Spain representing the Iberian cultures. Of course they own every single province which has Iberian culture as we can see here. Moving up we have France of course representing the French cultures and they own every single French cultured province. Over here of course we have Italy they also own Trentino and these provinces right here, all the Italian culture provinces. We already did a what if Italy existed in 1444. Now moving over to Germany, you might be thinking, okay, why is Austria and Oldenburg here as well? Well, because I let a month tick, so the countries can sort of adjust themselves. Germany actually just released Oldenburg and Austria as vassals because they are probably over their governing capacity. And this is something that the AI does in 1.31.2. But Austria and Oldenburg are vassals of Germany. I didn't set it up like that. That, Germany just released them. So I'm just gonna let them be instead of reintegrating them and then Germany will just pop them out again. Here we have England representing the British cultures and of course we have Ireland representing the Celtic cultures. Up here we have Denmark representing the Scandinavian culture and I didn't give this to Scandinavia because Scandinavia is a very weak country so I just left it as Denmark even though they will probably form Scandinavia as soon as they can. Over here we have Lithuania representing the Baltic cultures of course and Russia representing the East Slavic cultures. Having Russia in 1444 is gonna be pretty interesting to say the least. Here of course we have Hungary representing the Carpathian cultures and we do have this little exclave of Russia right here. As you all know this is the Ruthenian culture that is present in this province right here. Moving to the Balkans we have Serbia representing the South Slavic culture group. Since it's the biggest South Slavic nation in 1444 I thought that would be appropriate. And of course we have Byzantium representing the Byzantine culture group and of course they own these provinces right here as well as Cyprus and some islands here. Over here we have Kazan representing the Tatar culture group as well as Georgia representing the Caucasian culture group. Of course we have the Ottomans controlling all of the Levantine cultures. Ottomans are very very powerful. As we can see they're number two actually on the great powers list and we'll get to Malacca pretty soon. We have Persia representing the Persian cultures, Tunis representing the Maghrebi cultures. These three nations right here representing these three culture groups so the Sahelian, the Mande and the West African culture groups. We have Makuria representing the Nubian culture as well as Ethiopia, the Kushitic and Makuria does have a little exclave right here. We have Congo with the Congolese culture, Rwanda with the Gl Great Lakes culture, Kilwa with the East Bantu cultures and Mutapa with the Southern African cultures. So it's definitely going to be very interesting in Africa too. Moving over to India we have the five major culture groups which are Hindu Western Aryan, Dravidian, Central Indian, and Eastern Aryan cultures. You have Delhi, Bengal, Gujarat, Ratampur, and Vijayanagar, of course. Moving over here, the Ugric cultures is represented by Perm. They aren't a vassal of Russia. And I have Janju representing the Evanki culture group, as well as Oira representing the Altaic culture groups. Of course, here we have Ming, slightly smaller than they are at the start of the game. And we have Tibet representing the Tibetan cultures and Ming, the Chinese, respectively. Over here, of course, we have Korea with Korean culture, Japan in Japanese culture, and Ainu is representing the Kamchatkan culture. In Southeast Asia, we have Ava representing the Burman cultures, Ayutthaya representing the Thai cultures, Khmer with the Mon Khmer, and Malacca representing the Malay culture group. Malacca is actually the number one great power in the world, as we can see right here. And they did release Champa as a vassal. I guess they were over their governing capacity as well. And I did leave the New World, so North and South America, as well as Oceania and Australia, uncolonized so we could have some colonization action. So let's let a couple of decades go by, come back and see what all the nations have been getting up to. Oh yeah, Poland represents West Slavic cultures. 
So it's been about 15 years and to be honest a lot of wars have happened. So Serbia actually got decimated by every single country. They got declared on by the Ottomans, the Ottomans took this, they got declared on by Germany, Germany took this, they got declared on by Byzantium, Byzantium took a bunch of land, so did Hungary right after that and made them release Bosnia and now Italy declared on them and uh, Serbia won't be existing for very long to be honest. They did only manage to ally Georgia but Georgia got decimated in that war too with Kazan releasing Circassia from them and Ottomans taking some land here too. Denmark took a bit of Lithuania and England took a chunk out of Ireland. Kilwa took some land from Rwanda and Gujarat and Oirat made Delhi release some countries right here as well as taking a little bit from them. All these other small countries you're seeing is just big countries releasing vassals. So these are all vassals. Srivijaya has released a bunch of countries right here. Obviously they can't handle the governing capacity. So right now most of the action seems to be in Europe with everyone ganging up on Serbia. Let's see what else happens. So it's been a couple of more years and Serbia is down to one province with this being taken over by Byzantium and this by Hungary. Germany's vassals did declare an independence war that didn't work out for them. Kazan got beat up by Russia, Georgia and Perm and they lost some provinces to Georgia over here and some to Russia over here. The Ottomans somehow lost this to Tunis and this to Ethiopia. I didn't see how that happened. Congo and Ethiopia are ganging up on Rwanda. Ayutthaya got into a coalition war against Khmer and Ming and they lost and Srivijaya has released a ton of nations which are now their tributaries. Manchu also took some provinces from Korea and Denmark did get into a PU under France but now they're not. So it's been a few more years and as we can see right here Spain is in a war against Tunis, France and France's subjects and actually Tunis declared this war on Spain so that's very interesting. Russia is at war with Denmark, Ireland and Poland and as we can see Russia is winning they've already occupied half of Denmark and almost half of Poland. I guess even in this scenario Hungary is getting pummeled by Poland. Nothing new right there. Kilwa seems to be in a war against Ethiopia, Mutapa and Congo so Kilwa is going down they might be relegated to Madagascar here pretty soon. Not much changes in West Africa or with the Ottomans or in Persia or over in this area of the world. Most of the action is still concentrated in Europe with the most wars breaking out over here. On the great powers list we have Germany followed by France and then Italy followed by the Ottomans and Ming. Rivajaya is sixth. Remember they were first at one point. At seven we have Russia and at eight we have Spain. It's been a couple of more decades and the action is still focused in Europe. As you can see Byzantium just took out a huge chunk out of Hungary. They also have Bosnia as a vassal. Spain lost some land to Tunis. England got some more from Ireland. Denmark is in a war with Russia. Ottomans haven't been doing too much and neither has Persia. Delhi is almost done here in India. Gujarat seems to be the dominant nation. Over here in this region pretty much nothing has been happening to be honest. Some of the West African nations did get into a war with Mali losing to Ayer and Kilwa is almost gone along with Rwanda. Both of them being defeated by Ethiopia, Congo and Mutapa. But the stranger thing is all these countries keep integrating and releasing and integrating and releasing and integrating and releasing vessels over and over again. It's kind of annoying. Spain and France have started colonizing. As you can see Spain has some land right here and France has this little tiny province right here and uh, not too much wars uh, in general. I guess all the nations are pretty big so even when they do get into wars they only take a few provinces here and there but soon it's about to ramp up definitely. And the Protestant Reformation hasn't spawned and it's 1520. Great powers list looks like this right now. So it's been about 30 years since we last checked in and there have been quite a lot of changes actually as you can already see. So firstly the Ottomans of course took a big L in a war versus Byzantium, Persia and Russia. Now Persia and Russia of course didn't take anything but Byzantium did take quite a lot of provinces as we can see here in western Anatolia. I guess Constantinople is just like the source of power for the Ottomans because whenever they don't have it they literally don't do anything and their game goes horribly. They even lost to Tunis and Ethiopia earlier if you remember. Italy also took a big L to France as we can see here losing almost all of southern Italy. Now Naples is a subject of Spain and France took this. Sicily is independent so I'm expecting Italy to keep being crushed by Germany and France and maybe even Spain. Poland also lost a war to Germany and later Russia so they have lost some land. England of course formed Great Britain. Not much has been going on in Africa to be honest almost nothing. And also in Asia Oirat is in a war against Kazan. Kazan is of course gonna lose and Tibet has been expanding quite a bit over here in southern China. Ayutthaya is almost gone with Khmer becoming the new dominant power in this region. Vijaya hasn't been doing too much. They're just releasing countries which they make into tributaries or vassals starting off from the number one great power and they're not even on the list now. As we can see Byzantium have climbed onto the list. They are number seven 
right now. Japan has taken exploration ideas, so they will be colonizing. And we can see some Spanish colonies right here, as well as a French one down here. And Britain has started colonizing the Caribbean, and we have two more Spanish colonies right here. The natives are doing pretty good, to be honest. Going into the ledger, Ming has the largest army, followed by Russia, Oirat, Manchu, Spain, and Germany. These are the top armies and Russia has the highest income of all country. Let's let a few more years go by and we'll check back in again. So the craziest thing just happened, Oirat released the Mongol Empire as a subject. One of the, probably one of the top three most powerful nations in EU4, the Mongol Empire and they're a duchy and a plutocracy. Ah yes, the famous trade city of Mongol Empire. Poland is losing again. So it's been about 30 years since we last checked in and there have been some major changes as we can see Byzantium took out even a bigger chunk out of central western Anatolia here out of the Ottomans and they're in another war against the Ottomans right now which they are of course winning this time it's only Byzantium versus the Ottomans so no help from Russia or Persia and the Ottomans are also defending against Darfur this nation right here no major changes in Africa but Tunis did take some land from the Ottomans over here Germany does have a coalition against them which consists of Serbia Hungary and Italy. Russia is beating up Denmark once again and of course I think they're gonna win this war. They already have around 80% war score. Shun popped out over here and Oira and Manchu declared on them. Manchu did manage to get Beijing so that's pretty awesome. They might form Qing if they get some territories over here. Ming is pretty weak right now. Tibet has taken a lot of land over here. Oh yeah and we have the stateless society of Transoxiana. Now that's something you don't see every day. Not much changes over here. Gujarat seems to be becoming the dominant power in India. As you can see they're fighting Vijayanagar right now and they are winning big time. This is what the new world looks like so Great Britain have conquered almost all of the Caribbean in fact not almost all of it Spain is establishing colonies right here and in California too and they do have Brazil whereas the French have Argentina and yeah honestly I'm very surprised by Byzantium in this game and they're the ones I'm cheering for personally in the great powers list they are a Persia being seventh and this is the rest of them so let's see how far Byzantium can expand so it's 1614 and Byzantium is now in a PU under Russia and they're completely loyal as you can see Russia Russia has even taken parts of Anatolia right here and the Ottomans are basically non-existent they're down to these few provinces in Egypt a couple of provinces here and this one province here which is pretty funny Dilkadir is huge now and Russia does seem to be the most powerful country especially now that they got Byzantium in a PU and this of course can be evidenced by the great powers list as well still most of the action going on over here and over here a year has gotten into a war with Benin not a lot of changes over here and Ethiopia did start expanding into the Arabian Peninsula. Not a lot of changes over here either except that Oirad did expand this way but now Russia is pushing them back and Transoxiana is now a republic. Gujarat seems to be expanding more in India as well. The situation is pretty stable here though and the Protestant Reformation finally spawned. In fact it just spawned a few years ago in Germany over here and it has converted some province so late it's the 1600s. Usually this would happen about 120 years ago and yeah it's a real shame that Byzantium did get into a PU under Russia I think they would expand much more rapidly without being under a PU but Russia is still declaring wars over here so they are expanding just slower and we have Lebanon a real rare nation right here they are independent but I expect the Ottomans to be gone in a few years and the situation in Europe has mostly stabilized not too much wars going on honestly Hungary is somehow still alive and we'll check back in soon so there have been some other changes as you can see France owns this land for some reason Germany is in another war against Holland this time so in the second Dutch war for independence so the Netherlands did pop out Denmark formed Scandinavia kind of meh the Ottomans almost don't exist they're only down to these three provinces right here Persia have been expanding over here a little bit. In India it's still the same except Bengal has decided to expand this way a bit. Tibet did lose a war to Oirat and Yue and Wu did pop out. Khmer is still dominating in Southeast Asia along with Srivijaya. Nothing new in Africa. And Byzantium is still in a PU under Russia and everything's going great for them. They are number one great power. Germany have started colonizing so they have some provinces over here and over here. Not a full-fledged colony yet but they do have German Colombia over here which is being occupied by the British. This is the situation in South America. We have Spain here and France here and Spain here too and here. So the wars are kind of dying down right now but they still do happen. Italy has the 
biggest army right now, followed by Russia, Gujarat, France, and Great Britain, and Germany. But as you can see, it's almost 1680, and Russia have started integrating Byzantium, which should be done in about 50 to 60 years. Austria declared an independence war against Germany, and they did drag in a bunch of countries, as you can see. Spain and France were in this war also, but they did peace out. Tunis is dominating North Africa, as you can see. Spain has started colonizing Australia as well, and Japan has finally started expanding a bit. Transoxiana is still a republic, but they're close to getting integrated by Oira. They'll probably just release them again. Germany is very weak this game. This is due to the fact that they have been stuck in an endless loop of releasing and integrating vassals over and over again. This is what South America looks like, divided up evenly by Great Britain, Spain, and France. And in North America, Spain and Great Britain are dominant. Russia is still the number one great power. So it's 1720 and Russia have expanded here and here and they are pretty close to integrating Byzantium, only about 20 years left. Persia is getting smashed by Orat from the north and as we can see Orat have expanded here and here while losing territory to Russia over here. Ethiopia sort of blew up and now there are several countries in its place as well as them. Tunis control all of North Africa as well as Egypt and they might be moving in this direction as well. Austria is independent from Germany and they have Hungary in a personal union. I guess some things never change. This is what South America looks like and this is what North America looks like. Not too much has changed over here and Spain is getting a bigger foothold in Australia and Oceania. Let's see what the final 100 years hold for us. So now it's 1750 and as we can see we have a huge Gujarat as well as Bengal right here. UA is pretty big here in the south of France. Tunis continuing to expand over in this region of Africa and Russia have fed Byzantium even more territories over here which makes their integration slower. Kilwa somehow exists again. This is the situation in North America as we can see Spain and Great Britain dominating. And this is the great powers list right now. We can see Russia still number one followed by Spain, Great Britain, France, Germany, Gujarat, Srivijaya and Tunis. Persia has been pummeled by Orat and Gujarat so they are pretty small right now. Only about 70 more years left so let's see what happens in the remaining part of the game. So now it's almost the 1800s and it's honestly time to wrap it up so let's see what everyone has been up to. Obviously Russia integrated by Byzantium finally and they are huge. Gujarat and Bengal seems to be the dominant powers in India with Gujarat being slightly more powerful than Bengal. Ming is almost non-existent with Yue dominating southern China. Tibet was also crushed and Oirat did expand slightly but they were defeated by Russia in this area at least. Perm honestly I don't think changed even slightly. Congo seems to be the dominant power in southern Africa. They will probably eat up Mutapa pretty soon. This nation seems to have popped out here. I don't know what this nation is. Tunis is of course the dominant power in North Africa and in Egypt as well. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed by the Western European powers. They were severely hindered by the fact that they kept releasing and integrating and releasing and integrating the same vassals over and over again because of that governing capacity thing that countries do now in 1.31.2. So that was ultimately their downfall, just releasing vassals with the vassals becoming disloyal, integrating them, releasing them again. This is what North America looks like, dominated by Spain and Great Britain, but some natives are still present and looking pretty strong to be honest. Mexico is still mostly controlled by the Mexican nations and South America is split in three parts into the Spanish part over here and over here, the French part and the British part over here and over here. Looking at the great powers list, Russia is number one with 4,000 development followed by Spain, France, Great Britain, Germany, Gujarat, Srivijaya and Tunis. Russia is a military hegemon. Pretty disappointed by Srivijaya or Malacca should I say. They were the number one great power in 1444 but they just released so many nations which they didn't even make into vassals they released them as independent nations and later turned them into tributaries as you can see here they have a ton of tributaries going into the ledger Gujarat have the largest treasury with 42,000 and Russia has the greatest income with over 1,000 ducats a month, followed by Gujarat, Great Britain, Spain and France. Russia has of course the largest army with almost a million troops over here. And France is second with just a third of Russia's troops at 300,000, followed closely by Gujarat, Congo, Bengal, Tunis and so on. Nothing surprising here about Russia, although I didn't think they would be as strong as they were. I honestly thought this game would be dominated by the Ottomans, but as you can see the Ottomans don't even exist right now. And definitely very disappointed by the Western European nations. The highest developed province is London with 79 development followed by Paris, Phnom Penh, St. Petersburg, Ahmedabad, 
Kyoto, Chikuzen, Berlin, and so on. So no crazy development provinces. I guess the AI has toned down the concentrating development a bit. Here we have the religion map mode. So Great Britain is Anglican, Protestant and Reformed, almost non-existent. Only two provinces here in Switzerland. And all of this is Orthodox, Catholic. This is expected over here. Russia did do a lot of converting as well as Byzantium. Of course, Orthodox has a very good time and a very easy time converting. Most of the New World is Catholic with some Anglican and Animus provinces here and there. I'm also underwhelmed by the hordes, Manchu and Orat. I thought they would have done a lot more to be honest. So to answer the question, what if every culture group was a country in 1444? Well, there's no definitive answer actually. The nations I expected to do really great didn't do that great. The nations that I expected to be the strongest, which are the Western European nations, were pretty average. The nation with the strongest culture group, possibly the Levantine culture group, the Ottomans were very weak and they don't even exist right now. So it seemed like the smallest nations and the biggest nations did pretty good. Well as the nations with medium sized culture groups, they're the ones that had the worst time. It's a shame Byzantium fell under the PU of Russia because I think Byzantium would have expanded quite a lot, possibly even reaching Egypt and the Persian Gulf over here, but still Russia did manage to expand quite a lot. Also kudos to Poland for surviving this long, I thought they would be defeated pretty soon. And an honorable mention goes to Perm for surviving to the end of the game. That's been pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments what's the next what if scenario that I should do in future videos. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. And I've also launched channel memberships, so if you want to support the channel with more than subscribing, you can check out the join button down below and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.